Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Berta Worry here. I hope you are doing well, my sister, my brother. Trusting that you are doing well today. So may I ask you, did you take time out to study, study, study? Remember, we must study the word, and we it is late on planet Earth. And we know the solution is Jesus Christ. And he states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Right now, Father God, I ask you that you will decrease me so that you will be increased is my pr prayer father God and I thank you in Jesus name amen and amen okay so uh, scripture reading is coming from Proverbs 21 verses 21 Proverbs 21 verses 21 and it reads he that followed after righteousness and mercy findeth life righteousness and honor let me repeat it again he that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor, 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 honor. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his words. So let's get into our topic today. And it is, we are in chapter 15 of This is Justification by Faith. And we are still in, let me find my book here in faith and works by ellen g white i don't know if you guys can see that it kind of has a glare right now can you guys see that faith and works by ellen g white i think if i do it uh i don't know this way but it's kind of i don't know if the sunshine okay so this is where we are right now chapter 15. And it states, and so this is justification by faith. And a portion of this is a manuscript 21, um, 1891, written uh, February 21, 1891, published in the SDA Bible Commentary uh, 6.1070 uh, uh, 10, and 1071. Okay, and it states here, as the penitent sinners contrived before God, meaning remorseful before God, discern Christ's atonement in his behalf and accept his atonement as his only hope in this life and the future life, his sins are pardoned. This is justification by faith. Every believing soul is to conform his will entirely to God's will and keep in state of repentance and contrition, meaning being remorseful, exercising faith in the atoning merits of the Redeemer and advancing from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Pardon and justification are one and the same thing. Let me repeat that. Pardon and justification are one and the same thing. Through faith, the believer passes from the position of a rebel, a child of sin, and Satan to a position of a loyal subject of Christ Jesus, not because of his inherent goodness, but because Christ received him as his child by adoption. The sinner receives the forgiveness of his sin because these sins are bore by his substitute and surety. The Lord speak of his heavenly father saying, this is my child, I, I reprove, meaning I have pardoned him, I have pardoned him, so let's use this word. This is my child, I've pardoned him from the condemnation of death, giving my life insurance policy, eternal life, because I have taken his place and have suffered for his sins. He is even my beloved son, Thus man pardon and clothed with the beautiful garments of Christ's righteousness stands faultless before God. It says the sinner may err, but he is not cast off without mercy. His only hope, however, is repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the Father's right to give, let me go back. It is the Father's right to forgive our transgressions and sins 
because Christ has taken upon himself our guilt and pardoned us, imputing to us his own righteousness. His sacrifice, testif his sacrifice satisfied fully the demands of justice. Justification is the, opposite, is the opposite of condemnation. Justification is the opposite of condemnation. God's boundless mercy is exercised towards those who are wholly undeserving. He forgives transgressions and sins for the sake of Jesus, who has become the appropriation, meaning the atonement for our sins, through faith in Christ, the guilty transgressor is brought into favor with God and into the strong hope of eternal life. So that concludes my topic today. This is justification by faith. So we know that justification by faith is pardon and justification are one and the same. So pardon and justification are one and the same thing. So when we say we are justified by faith, meaning that we are pardoned, uh, we are pardoned from our sins. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Ike. A couple weeks ago she was sick, and then now it looks like again she is sick. So I don't know, some really strange things going on because the other dogs were sick as well uh, yesterday. Um, so nevertheless, so let me go on. So this is justification by faith. So meaning that we have asked the Lord to forgive our sins, to pardon us. So that, that is justification. It says pardon and justification are one and the same. And how do we go, how we do get justification? Is because we have asked the Lord to forgive us. And he don't look at our life. He looks at his son because he was our substitute. Okay. So this just only one topic in chapter 15. So I, I will not do no review tomorrow because it's just one lesson. This, then it also said justification is the opposite of condemnation. Okay. So it's, it's, sorry, let me go back here. It says. God's boundless mercy is exercised towards those who are wholly undeserving. He forgives transgressions and sins for the sake of Jesus, who have become the atonement for our sins. Okay? So, my sister and brother, we, we just need to study, study, study for ourselves. Don't be listening to, even for me, I give you guys the scripture to follow. I even give you the verse, the, the, the different lessons that I'm, that I'm studying. You can go and do the research for yourself. You can go and get the books yourself, okay? So on, on tomorrow, uh, I'm going to go into uh, chapter 16, and we're still in uh, Faith and Works. And the chapter 16 is going to deal with, is going to deal with, accepted in Christ accepted in Christ that will be our topic for tomorrow so may I share with you my devotion may I share with you my devotion so let me get that let me drink some water first okay So that don't blow away okay more than a prophet more than a prophet more than a prophet that is the devotion for today and it says son of man I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel therefore hear the words at my mouth and give them warning from me and this is from coming from Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 17 should I repeat that? Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the words at my mouth and give them warning from me. Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 17. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God. I thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. Father God, I continue to allow your Holy Spirit to take full control. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It says, last night in a vision, I was standing before an assembly of our people bearing a decided testimonies regarding present truth and present duty. When we state present truth, it means the message for today. 
God gave us a message on Revelation 14 that Babylon is falling, is falling. So we are warning individuals to come out of the false church and come under the banner of Jesus Christ. And that meaning not only keeping nine of the commandments, but we are keeping all of God's commandment, all 10 of God's commandment. And the last one that most people are not following or thinking it's been, it's been done away with, I don't know how they came up with that, and that is Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. God re remind us, it says, remember. That is the only text that said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God gave us six days to do what we want to do, and he only asked us for one day. And that day was always from creation, God created the world in six days, and he rested on one day. And what day was that? It was always Saturday. It was never Sunday. So you can go to my Google, my uncle on Google, and you could do the search and say, who changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday? And it will be very clear to you that the Roman system has changed that day. So my sister and brother, God, the last battle of earth history is going to be about worship. Who are you going to worship? Man says, Sarah, um, no, God says Saturday, Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11, and that's dealing with the fourth commandment, and man says Sunday. So which day? Which day are you going to, who are you going to give, um, who are you going to listen to, my sister and brother? So we have to continue to do the search or search the scripture for ourselves to see whether these things are so. And once you have gotten enough evidence, my sister and brother, then you need to walk in that light. You need to walk in that light. And said, so let me go back. It says, the last night in vision, I was standing before an assembly of our people, bearing a decided testimony regarding present truth and present duty. After this discourse, and gathered about me asking questions. They desire so many explanations about this point and that point and another point that I said, hold on, I need to drink some water, hold on. Hold on. Okay, so what did she say? What did she say? They desire so many, my goodness, oh, bugs, 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 okay. Let me pray, pray, pray. Father God, I ask you to continue to calm my mind and my spirit. And I thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. They, de they desire so many explanations about this point and that point and another point that I said. One at a time, if you please, lest you confuse me. And then I appeal to them saying, for years, you have had many evidence that the Lord has given me a work to do. These evidence could scarcely have been greater than they are. Will you brush away all these evidence as a cobweb at the suggestions of a man's unbeliefs? That which makes my heart aches in the fact that many who are now perplexed and tempted are those who have had abundance of evidence and opportunities to consider and pray and understand, and yet they do not discern the nature of the, of the, of the sophistries, meaning the fallacies that are presented to influence them to reject the warning of God, let me say, to reject the warning God has given to save them from the delusions of these last days. Let me go back. This was a long one. It says, let me go back. Let me repeat this. That which makes my heart aches is the fact that many who, have, who are now perplexed and tempted are those who have an abundance of evidence, an opportunity to consider and pray and understand, and yet they do not discern the nature of the fallacy that are presented to influence them to reject the warnings God has given to save them from the delusions of these last days. Some have stumbled over the fact that I said I did not claim to be a prophet. And they have asked, why is this? I have 
had no claims to make, only that I am instructed that I am the Lord's messenger. Early in my work, I, ha I was asked several times, are you a prophet? I have, I have ever responded, I am the Lord's messenger. I know that many have called me a prophet, but I have made no claims to this title. My Savior declares, declares me to be his messenger. Your work, he instructed me, is to bear my word. Strange things will arise, and in your youth, I set you apart to bear the message to the erring ones, to carry the words before unbelievers, and with pen and voice to reprove, meaning reprove or rebuke, from the words, actions that are not right. Encourage from the word, meaning I, I exhort. Courage from the word. I will make my word open to you. My spirit and my power shall be with you. Be not afraid of man, for my shield will protect you. It is not you that speak it. It is the Lord that giveth the message of warning and reproof. Never deviate from the truth under any circumstances. Let me repeat that. Never deviate from the truth under any circumstances. I guess my, I hope my, hope my uh, ministers are listening to that. Never deviate from the, from the truth under any circumstances. Give the light I shall give you. The messages for these last days shall be written in the book and shall stand immoralized to testify against those who have once rejoiced in the light but who have been led to give it up because of the seductive influence of evil. So that concludes my topic today more than a prophet so we know uh, this is this book here is written by ellen g white as well and so it's it's the um i just showed you fate and works and also these books here it's on this the same information it's just different topics steps to christ same information that's got different covers they have a spanish cover because uh, this book here is one of the well, one of the most read books in 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 the world, uh, Steps to Christ. So this book here comes in different languages as well. It just comes in different covers because you see me do the different covers, right? And um, and then also we have one of my favorite one, The Great Controversy. This is also written by the same author, Ellen G. White. So we know that she states in her own writings that she is not a prophet she is a messenger so when people state that she is a prophet no my sister and brother she was not a prophet she was a messenger that god has sent for us and giving us instructions information that we need for the last day and if we had if we were believers and we if we were as as a seven day adventist if we were reading the bible as we should then we would not need the lesser light so the Bible is the greater light, and her information, her books, is the lower light. And she just give, um, put a light under the, put, give us a light, um, with give us more instructions, and in, she makes it very clear of what God's ha uh, requirements for us today. But like I state, we as individuals, she points us to the Bible. Go to the Bible, study your Bible, my sister and brother. As we study the Bible and ask the Lord to guide us, to give us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the ones that give us the understanding of what the word means. So we don't need to have all these different translation, my sister and brother. We could just go to the King James Version and we will get the uh, insight that we need because we have asked the Lord to send us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that, that give us the clear light and give us the understanding that we need for this last day. I'm thinking, it's like, well, what's going on? What's going on, Burdell? And it's, I just remember I have not taken my herbs yet, and it's one particular one that I drink. This morning I was drinking 
um, a lemon lemon juice, just lemon water, just lemon water, fresh lemons. And apparently that is not enough, so I got to go back and take my uh, stuff that I normally take every morning. So I got to go back on my herbs. I got to go back on my herbs. My body is going to a cleansing, a cleansing, a cleansing, and it's like I need um, more um, water, I need more water. And so I have to make sure that I be drinking my water. Um, yesterday I did, um, I did, I uh, had a massage done, and then I had uh, my chiropractor. And whenever I do those guys together, I need a lot of water. And so far, I guess I have not had enough today. I have almost like a half a gallon already this morning, but I guess it's not enough. So that is what's going on with me and my sister and brother. So thank you guys so much for stopping by today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So if this was a blessing to you, my sister and brother, oh, but you know what, before we go there, let us go ahead and pray. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this message. I thank you for the words that's sitting on the tree, on the limb right now, Father God, and they're just playing and having a great time, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you have given us another opportunity to get our lives in order we thank you father god for nature that we can look at nature and we could enjoy nature father we thank you father god we thank you thank you thank you father god if we have done anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight father god i ask you father god that you forgive us and we promise to do better the next time father god and once you have pardoned us father god we ask you to take these empty vessels father god fill us up with the love the power with the joy, the peace that we need, Father God, with the love, the unity that we need for one another, Father God. Continue to be with each one of us today. today. You know our individual needs, our individual shortcoming, and we thank you, Father God, that you have already provided for us. You have already dispatched angels, Father God, to help us, to rescue us, and we thank you, Father God. We forever give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, thank you guys so much for stopping by. So if this was a blessing to you, can you hit the like button? Can you make a comment? Can you hit the share button? Follow me over YouTube under Burdell Warrior. While you're there, hit the subscribe button, subscribe button, hit the bell notification. And then whether you're on Facebook, oh, I see my cat. He has something in his mouth. Uh, he's one of the mother of one of those kittens. So I have right now, I got like three sets of kittens. I have, I think, about 10 of them running around, and it's like three mothers, three mothers. So it's a lot of stuff going on here. It's a lot of stuff going on here. So last night, my husband and I was watching, um, looking out and watching the kittens, how they play with each other, how they interact with each other. And it's like, you know, it would be nice if we as individuals could be more loving towards one another and more patient with one another. So one of the kittens was like hitting the other one. It's almost like tag, tag you it, you know, that game that we used to play as kids, tag you it. And he just sat there and he was just, uh, the other one was just, um, was so intrigued of the water hose. He was on the water hose and he was just looking at the water hose. And it's like, oh no, man, I'm not ready. I'm not playing that game right now. And it's so funny, you know? And this is something like when we take time out in nature, my sister and brother, you can look and it, it kinds of uh, distressed you. It's like if you have any stress or any anxiety or maybe upset about something, you come in nature and you look at nature and sometimes you just can, just, just can laugh at nature. It's like, how beautiful, how just great time how God created everything and everything works together for our good and we need to continue uh, um, believing that everything is working together so where you got where you got the good the bad and the ugly or the indifferent every all that stuff is working for our good remember God the Father has measured everything you're going through everything I'm going through he has measured it and he knows that you can pass the test he knows that I can pass the test all we have to do is allow him to take full control my sister and brother just like Job, we got to make sure that we are standing in his arm. We are allowing him to carry us through, carry us through. And you know what? I just remember, I did not do my final song. So I already gave you the instructions about Facebook or YouTube. And for those of you that want the in-depth studies, you can either scroll down on Facebook or you can go over to YouTube. And while you're on YouTube, my sister and brother, if you scroll along, there's a wealth of information there uh, that I have different um, herb, herbal products there. I have books, I have uh, a system that will help you if you are a business owner, that will help you to have your, video, your videos go from Facebook straight to YouTube 
So it is a wealth of information, all the information there, my sister and brother. If you click on those links and if you make a purchase, it goes to help me um, with my ministry. It helps with my ministry so that all the funds goes back into my ministry. Okay, so let me go ahead and do my song. I did not do that. I have to do my song. So here's my hymn. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. This is my hymn. Closing hymn. Oh, souls, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's a light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Over us sin no more has dominion, for more than conquerors we are. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Here's the last verse. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let me repeat the last, the chorus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Mm. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, my sister. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, my brother. And before we go, I already did our prayer, but before we go, may I have a hug? May I have a hug? So here we go. One, two, three. Thank you, my sister and brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that hug. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. May God continue to richly bless you and your family. Until tomorrow, be blessed and take care.